Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insight into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan airspace breached again as Iran strikes terrorist hideouts in Balochistan. Pakistan faces the consequences of its support for terrorism. And Khalistani terrorist Gurpat Pan Singh Panno threatens to kill India's Punjab CM Bhagwant Man. Let's begin the show. Iran has carried out another airstrike beyond its borders, this time in neighboring Pakistan. Iranian state media said that the strike had hit two sites linked to terror group Jaish al Adil in the southwestern Pakistani province of Balochistan. The aftermath has seen Pakistan recall its ambassador, expel the Iranian diplomat and respond with retaliatory airstrikes in Iran, escalating hostilities and claiming lives. Let's delve into the details in our report. On 16th January, Iran conducted a surgical strike against Pakistan. Iranian missiles hit a village in the Iran-Pakistan border region that falls in Pakistan's Balochistan province, and the timing could not have been more interesting. Recently, Pakistan caretaker Prime Minister Anwar ul Haq and the Foreign Minister of Iran met in Davos on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum, and just hours after the handshake in Davos, Iran attacked Pakistan. Iran launched an airstrike in Balochistan. The target was a terrorist group, Jaish al Adil, also known as the Army of Justice. The group is an ethnic Baloch Sunni Muslim militant that has carried out attacks on Iranian security forces in the border region with Pakistan. The operation was conducted by IRGC, which is Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps, the armed force of the Iranian regime. کشور همسایه دوست و برادر ما پاکستان مورد هدف پهباد و موشک های ایران نبودند گروهی موسوم به جیش العدل که یک گروه تروریستی ایرانی است و در بخش هایی از مناطق پاکستان در استان سیستان و بلوچستان پاکستان پناه گرفته اند و ما بارها در مورد اون با مقامات عالی رتبه نظامی، امنیتی و سیاسی پاکستان گفتگو کردیم. عملیات هایی رو در روزهای گذشته در ایران انجام دادند. پاسخ ما روی تروریست های ایرانی در داخل خاک پاکستان هست. من قبل از این گفتگو با همکارم وزیر خارجه محترم پاکستان در این خصوص گفتگو کردم. ما به حاکمیت و تمامیت ارزی پاکستان احترام میگذاریم به حاکمیت و تمامیت ارزی عراق احترام میگذاریم اما اجازه نمیدهیم که امنیت ملی کشورمون رو به بازی بگیرند اسلام آباد says it is a violation of its sovereignty and Iran has done it despite several communication channels being open between the two countries. Now Iran and Pakistan are at odds. Pakistan has recalled its ambassador to Iran and has asked Iran to not send the Iranian envoy. The Iranian diplomat has been expelled. Pakistan reserves the right to respond to this illegal act and the responsibility for the consequences will lie squarely with Iran. We have conveyed this message to the government of Iran. We have also informed them that Pakistan has decided to recall its ambassador from Iran and that the Iranian ambassador to Pakistan, who is currently visiting Iran, may not return for the time being. We have also decided to suspend all high-level visits which were ongoing 
or were planned between Pakistan and Iran in the coming days. Also in response to the Iran airstrikes, Pakistan launched retaliatory airstrikes in Iran, allegedly targeting terror hideouts in Iran. Uh, this morning, Pakistan undertook a series of highly coordinated and specifically targeted precision military strikes against terrorist hideouts in Sistano Baluchistan province of Iran. A number of terrorists were killed during the intelligence-based operation codenamed Margbar Sarmachar. The attack killed at least nine people and further raised tensions between the neighboring nations. The Dariyaftir is that four men, four kudak, three men and two men, who were at the outside, were in the attack in the area روستایی که سه چهار کیلومتری مرز ایران هست اتفاق افتاده اینها کشته بود. The tit for tat attacks appeared to target two Baloch militant groups with similar separatist goals on both sides of the Iran-Pakistan border. However, the two countries have accused each other of providing safe haven to the groups in their respective territories. According to media reports, the attack by the Iranian military was a retaliatory response to the death of 11 Iranian police force members, who were killed by the notorious Sunni terror group Jesh al Adil. Pakistan's terror group posed a threat not just to India, but also to the region and the world, and that includes Iran. Iran shares a border with Pakistan, a 90 km long border. And along this border is the Pakistani province of Balochistan. That's where Iran conducted airstrikes. And this is not the first instance when Pakistani airspace has been breached by foreign nations to conduct operations on terror operatives or groups. The airstrike of Iran was very similar to what India did in 2019. The surgical strikes in Balakot those were in retaliation to the Pulwama terrorist attack, a suicide attack which killed 40 Indian security personnel. And also to what US did in 2011. The US, under former President Barack Obama, carried out a daring operation to take out Al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden. The Navy SEAL commandos went deep inside the Pakistani territory in the city of Abbottabad and carried out the operation. This recent crisis involving Iran and Pakistan started over Iran's charges against Pakistan that it was aiding and abetting initially the Jundullah and now the Jaish Adal to carry out terrorist strikes against Iran. Now, Pakistan had proposed and promised a number of things, but as is Pakistan's wont, which uh, uh, the United States found out, Pakistan does not walk the talk. So it did nothing to stop these groups from operating in Iran and carrying out acts of terror till Iran did what United States and India have already done. That they decided to take matters into their own hands and carry out strikes, strikes within Pakistan itself. Remember, the United States has done this with respect to Osama bin Laden and before that, uh, it has carried out Tomahawk uh, cruise missile strikes against a number of terrorist groups that were operating in Pakistan while the Americans were in Afghanistan and even earlier than that. India did so with respect to, to Balakot. Due to Pakistan's record as a state sponsor of terror, all of its neighbours, excluding China, have degraded diplomatic ties with the country. On one hand, Pakistan is struggling with a failing economy and on the other hand, its neighbours are bombing terror camps without even taking its sovereignty seriously. Moving on. In the capital city of Pakistan, a large number of Baloch families are participating in the sit-in protest for the safe recovery of missing persons. The majority of participants are elderly people, women and children.
all of whom are relatives of victims of enforced disappearances. Dr. Maharang Baloch, who is leading the protest against extrajudicial killings, is saying that the people are facing both physical and mental torment by Pakistani security forces. However, the ongoing Baloch protests are posing a significant challenge to those who are sitting in power. Our report. For more than a month, the Baloch women's protest has persisted, spanning from Turbat, Balochistan to Islamabad. Despite facing freezing temperatures, women, children and men are steadfastly leading the protest with over 200 families joining the cause. The protests ignited following the disappearance of Baloch youngster Balach Molabaksh on October 29. Despite being presented in court by the Counter-Terrorism Department of Balochistan on November 21, Baksh was reportedly killed in a disputed encounter just two days later, sparking widespread outrage. Led by the Baloch Yagjahiti Committee, the main protests journeyed from Turbat to Quetta and then to Islamabad, where the Baloch March is now in its third week, unfortunately ignored by the government, judiciary and other stakeholders. Despite its peaceful nature, the state's response has been marked by arrests, lodging fake cases and attempts to undermine the movement through misinformation, drawing accusations from Baloch marchers who claim the police are complicit in harassing peaceful protesters. Baloch Nasal Kushi ke khilaf jari aaj is tehri ke 50 din hum Balochistan samet puri duniya mein hamare is tehri ke taawun karne wale aur support karne wale logo se mukhatib hai aaj hamari tehri ko riyasati jabr aur riyasati tashaddud ke baad sabse bade crackdown ka samna hai riyasat ki janib se bithaye gaye non state actors ki janib se is tehri ko sabotage karne ke liye ab violence ki taraf ye log le jana chahte hain کیونکہ اس تحریک میں جتنے بھی افراد شامل ہیں وہ تمام بلوچستان کے مختلف حصوں سے بلوچ لاپتہ افراد کے لوائکین ہیں جن میں عورتیں بچے اور بوڑھے اور بزرگ شامل ہیں جب اسٹیٹ نے اپنی تمام ترقوت لگائی ہے کہ کیسے اس تحریک کو سبوتاش کیا جائے آج ہمارے درنے میں موجود جتنے بھی فیملیز ہیں ان سب کو عراسہ کیا جا رہا ہے سولیڈاریٹی پروٹیسٹ آر ناو ہیپننگ ان کراچی پنجاب اور بلوچستان in support of the main sit-in by the Baloch Yagjahiti Committee in Islamabad against enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. For decades, Balochistan has endured human rights abuses and extrajudicial killings as highlighted in the 2023 Human Rights Commission of Pakistan report, which emphasized the impunity with which disappearances, especially of political activists, occurred. Baloch activists have recently filed a petition urging the UN to investigate human rights violations in Balochistan, demanding a fact-finding mission led by the United Nations Working Group. Baloch Yagjati Committee ki janib se ek online petition jari kiya gaya hai jisme UN samet tamam insani akuk ke idaron se appeal ki jati hai ki wo Balochistan mein aaye. और यूएन की फैक्ट फाइंडिंग मिशन के तहत बलूचिस्तान में होने वाले जबरी गुमशुदगियों मसखशुदा लाशों टारगेट किलिंग्स और इज्तमाही कब्रों के केसेस को रिपोर्ट किया जाए और दुनिया भर के सामने लाया जाए और जो इदारे बलूच नसल कुशी में मुलविस हैं उनका एहतसाब किया जाए ये पिटिशन दुनिया के किसी भी कोने में ओपन हो सकती है इसमें रिक्वायर्ड इन्फॉर्मेशन डाल के इसको साइन करके अपनी यकजहती का सबूत दें और इस बात کا ثبوت دیں کہ اس وقت بلوچستان میں جو تحریک جاری ہے آپ اس کی حمایت کرتے ہیں اور بلوچستان میں ہونے والی ظلم جبر اور نائن صافیوں کے خلاف آپ ہمارے ساتھ اس تحریک میں کھڑے ہیں The Pakistan Army's systematic atrocities on intellectuals, journalists, students and political activists have intensified human rights violations silencing those who seek their rights and justice the Baloch, suffering socially and financially, expressed dissatisfaction with the Pakistani government's response, turning to the international community for intervention and resolution. 
This historic women-led march, the largest in Balochistan's history, underscores the urgent need for the government to address the legitimate demands of the Baloch marches before the situation escalates further. In an ironic turn of events, Pakistan, often associated with harboring and supporting terrorism, that disrupts peace in India and Afghanistan, now grapples with a series of deadly terror attacks. Over recent months, the nation has suffered the loss of numerous lives as terror groups relentlessly target both police personnel and civilians. The recurring assaults highlight the country's apparent inability to effectively counter the menace, leading to significant losses in terms of life and property. A report. Pakistan is grappling with heightened unpredictability and insecurity due to surge in terror attacks across the country. In Quetta, Balochistan province, a recent bomb blast near Zagroon Road left nine people, including a policeman and three children, injured. According to the local police, the explosion occurred when children who were picking the trash were sifting through the garbage. In a separate incident in Ketch district, five soldiers lost their lives when terrorists targeted a security vehicle with an improvised explosive device. However, no group claimed responsibility for the attacks. Balochistan is one of the most undergoverned states of Pakistan. Uh, which means there is a high level of uh, you know, uh, social resentment. Uh, there is also very low enforcement and consequently very high uh, violence. So, you know, for Balochistan to be targeted is one of the easiest things to happen. Remember, it is also a schism, a lot of uh, schism zone, because a lot of uh, the north is actually very heavily Pashtun, uh, and the south is uh, heavily Baloch. So there are uh, uh, schisms, uh, social sch schisms out there. There is a lack of governance. There is a lack of enforcement, which makes uh, Balochistan, the cities especially, the easiest targets in uh, any terrorist's uh, playbook. The attacks were the latest incidents amid a surge in terrorist activities across the country, especially in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan since the outlawed terror group Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan ended its ceasefire with the government in November 2022. Last week, TTP targeted a police truck transporting around 25 policemen for anti-polio campaign duties in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The attack resulted in the death of five soldiers with dozens more injured. For decades, the Pakistani state has been waging a war against the Pakistani Taliban, a terror group that seeks to overthrow the government and establish a strict Islamic state. But despite the military's efforts, the TDP has continued to thrive, carrying out deadly attacks against civilians and security forces alike. Over the past five years, there has been a consistent and alarming surge in violence in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan provinces. Equally greater concern is the collective percentage of violence-related fatalities recorded in these two provinces, which indicates a disturbing upward trend over the last five years. According to Center for Research and Security Studies, Together, they suffered 72% of all fatalities in 2019 and this unsettling figure surged to a staggering 92% in the first nine months of 2023. Hence, Pakistan must commit to a structural change and betterment if it now wishes not to lose any more of its personnel and civilians. Pakistani government uh, they have a very narrow view of security. They're, you know, they keep foisting India as a straw man enemy so that it will detract from internal uh, uh, squabbles and things like that. Their answer to everything is to prop up India as the enemy and say this is an uh, Indian, um, <coughs> excuse me, an Indian conspiracy. 
So what ends up happening is actual security, the people's security within Pakistan is zero. It has always been zero. The police is one of the most useless polices, under-policed, of course, to add to everything. Uh, massive levels of corruption, massive levels of uh, plunder by the elites out there uh, in coordination with the police, incidentally. So when you have essentially what is a um, sort of extractive, extortive colonial gangster setup, uh, where is the average security? Their entire focus is external security, zero and in internal security. The recent attacks in Quetta and Ketch underscores a series of deadly incidents prompting questions about the government's commitment to counter terrorism and citizen protection. These attacks have raised serious questions about the Pakistani state's commitment to fighting terrorism and protecting its citizens. The people of Pakistan deserve a safer and more secure future. Khalistani terrorist Gurpat Pan Singh Panno has issued a new dire threat, this time against India's Punjab State Chief Minister Bhagwant Man and the state's Director General of Police Gaurav Yadav, timed for Republic Day. The alarming video shared on the banned social media platform of Six for Justice urges gangsters to unite and launch an attack on the CM on January 26th. Panno, founder of the designated terrorist group SFJ has a history of issuing threats, including one against Air India passengers in November 2023. Khalistani terrorist Gur Patwan Singh Pannu has threatened to kill Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man and Director General of State Police Gaurav Yadav on Republic Day. In a video uploaded on the banned social media handle of the radical outfit Six Foot Justice, Pannu has urged gangsters to unite and launch attack on CM on January 26. This is the latest in the series of threats the Sikh for Justice founder and designated terrorist Pannu issued against Indian establishments and authorities. In November 2023, a video of Pannu had surfaced in which he was seen issuing a threat to people planning to travel via Air India. Pannu had urged six to avoid Air India flights on and after November 19, citing danger to their lives. In the threatening video, Pannu was heard demanding the Indira Gandhi International Airport in New Delhi be closed on November 19. The video had brought back memories of the 1985 Air India flight bombing, which resulted in the death of 329 people. The bombing of Air India flight by the Khalistani terrorists is the worst terrorist attack in Canadian history. Gurpatwan Singh Pannu has been issuing these terrorist threats uh, against the Indian leaders as well as the establishment here for quite some time now, sitting on American soil. Uh, this is totally unacceptable, but of course this does not uh, mean that uh, there is widespread support for uh, people like uh, Pannu uh, because there are uh, a number of Sikhs who are living abroad, especially in the United States, who do not support these policies at all. To say that the Khalistan movement is prevalent all over the world is actually uh, denying the facts on the ground. Uh, the fact remains that uh, Pannu seems to be uh, receiving help from the Pakistani uh, establishment and the intelligence agencies. Formed in 2007, Six for Justice is a US-based separatist group that seeks secession of Punjab from India as Khalistan. The group was founded by Gurpatwan Singh Pannu, a law graduate from Punjab University and currently an attorney at law in the US. He is also the legal advisor of SFJ. The group had launched a secessionist campaign, Referendum 2020, seeking to liberate Punjab from Indian occupation. In 2018, Pakistan also allowed SFJ to open a Referendum 2020 office in Lahore 
for facilitating the registration of voters and giving information to Sikhs about it, according to a report by the Times of India. The Government of India banned the group in 2019 under the Unlawful Activities Act. In 1971, when India defeated Pakistan in a historic war and Bangladesh as a new nation was created, Pakistan realized that it can never defeat India in a conventional war. Hence, in 1977, General Ziaul Haq, the then Chief of Staff of the Pakistani Army, who later on became the President, formulated a military doctrine by the name Beating India into Thousand Cuts. This military doctrine is still today taught to the Pakistani Armed Forces officers in the Staff College in Quetta. According to this doctrine, Pakistan should aid and abet terrorism in India so that India bleeds from various places. The first time that this doctrine was used by Pakistan was to fuel the Khalistani movement in Punjab. And ever since, Pakistan has been using this doctrine to fuel terrorism in India. Today, Pakistani government and the Pakistani army and ISI fully support and fan the Khalistani movement. The Khalistani narrative has failed to find any traction in India over the years. Desperate for international attention, Khalistani terrorists settled abroad are plotting anti-India propaganda with the help of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. There has been a recent upsurge in activity by Khalistan supporters on foreign soil, which has created a security challenge for India. However, India is committed that it won't tolerate any political agenda and terror activities that aim to break national unity. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.